Good morning and welcome to Carp Pursuit Series 2, Episode 1. Remember this wheel because I certainly do. This episode, we're at one of my old stomping grounds. Where else but linear fisheries to be fair. We're going to be on St John's. It's a lake I've not fished on site for a long, long time. Since the charity events to be fair. But it's boiling hot. There's fish everywhere. We're going to go have a little look around see where we can set up. But uh, for that, till then, you know what time it is? Wheel of Fate. Well, that I can deal with. Bear in mind, linear usually is a lot about particle fishing, and there's a massive bonus in this for me. I actually work for Dynamite Baits, so that is gonna come in handy, isn't it, when I empty the van later? So, without further ado, we're on particle fishing, we're on St John's, like I said. Let's go and see where we can fit in. Right, the corner peg on the point gives me lots of options this, but let me tell you, nothing is going to be happening <laughs> at full speed today, which is what I'm usually faster than full speed for those of you that know me, but it's going to be chuck the shelter up, take a couple of hours to be fair to sort my life out, I've got to put new leaders on on that, um, it's just too hot, so I'm not going to bother till later, let's take our time, get it set up. Right, as some of you will guess, it's raw, it's been roaring hot today. Now I got set up probably about three or four hours ago, but it was so hot, I looked like I fell in. So we, we spent a bit of time in the shop with the lads over there at Linear. Um, what a mega shop that is, by the way. And now I'm ready for Steve. If you remember, I spun the wheel, it's particle fishing, which suits me down to earth at Linear. And let's not forget, dynamite do just about every particle on the planet. So it's gonna be interesting from that massive range as to what Mr. Coe's leaning over that camera behind your telly uh, selected for me to use. So well, let's have a little look then, Steve. That's exactly right. I'm going to start you off with a brand new one. Wow, yeah. Some that was really heavy then. Sauce hemp. You got some sauce hemp. Let's have a little look at that. Some chilli hemp. Not used that before. I've used them before. Yeah. Some nuts. <laughs> All right. That. Your favourite sweet corn. Got to have corn. We're linear, mate. It has and to be sweet corn. Some more of the new... Right, the hook bait tubs. Yeah. Right, so first and of all, the sauce. Your, your challenge yet. No, go on then. Which is to catch three carp on three different particle hook baits. Oh, okay. Well, since it's 30 degrees, they're not really eating. Um, they've just come off the back of spawning. That should be really easy, shouldn't it? <laughs> Mate, listen, we'll have a go. That's what's called a challenge. I like the idea of this, though, Steve. Yeah. The salt, that is real meaty smell, and I've never used the salt spoilie, but that, I'm looking forward to putting that in. Right, the other guys I've used before, we've got the, we've got the large tigers, haven't we? Just as well, these are allowed at linear, aren't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. A bit underused here, actually. They are underused, but I have exactly. used them over the years, and they are, they do produce a lot of fish when applied correctly. Right, that's them two, let's have a look in here. Right, these are the hook baits that we've been doing a while now. These have been my favourite. How long have these been out now? A year or so? Yeah. These, I know it's, look, listen, it's not a porno show. Naked tiger nuts, boosted hook baits, they are brilliant. Absolutely, I've had a lot of fish on them ones, the naked tiger nut ones. They smell like vanilla latte or something like that, Stephen. It's real creamy, really lovely. What else we got? <laughs> right. We've got black tiger nuts. Never use them, but um, I, might <laughs> I might choose to use them on this trip. We've got... They will definitely be getting used. They are peanuts booster hook baits. Now that is a really underused particle that I actually rate higher than tigers, funny enough. Or I have done over the years. Right. Jumbo tiger nuts, yeah, they're whoppers. They almost resemble these ones, don't they? The, the big ones look just that little bit bigger than them. That'd be interesting to use as a hook bait as well. 
And that's peanuts. And that's got two, two of everything. Right. It? So, question for you now: If I catch a fish on the naked tiger nuts, yeah, and another fish on the jumbo tiger nuts, does that count as separate hook baits? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we've, we've got limited, and the other is obviously going to be one on on corn, and then we'll try one on the peanuts. So yeah, I'm good with that, mate. I mean, it's a nice varied range, isn't it? These are so good, these little tubs, mate. But I don't think you've given me, I think the hardest part you've given me is getting three bites. Not necessarily on particles because of how the lake is at the moment, but we haven't been to this one for a long while. No. And uh, looking forward to this, there's a hell of a lot of big fish in here now. It's been so hot, it's cooling off nicely now. All I've got to do now is decide what rigs and I'm going to have a little flick around now. The buzzers are in the ground. The rods are all propped up here. They've been all afternoon. I'll have a little flick around, get back to you with where I'm going to put them. Nice. After a few flicks with a bare lead, I had located a smooth, clear area. Now it's time to put some freebies on it. Having baited the smooth area, i see two of my favourite Ronnies right on the spot. That is all three rods in position now with various hook baits on. Um, now it's time to knock up a couple of different types of uh, spawn mix and um, get some bait over the top of them. Right, on this, the two left hand rods, I've got two rods here and one behind me because this swim you've got the luxury of it, you're on a corner. So this area here, uh, it's a nice firm patch, it's just behind the weed at 10 wraps. I'm going to do 10 spawns. Now I've done eight. In the bucket we've got mainly sauce and chilli hemp mixed together. Three tins of corn as you saw, little tub of peanuts and a bigger couple of handfuls of tiger nuts. Just a little bit of variety out there, get them grubbing around. Now I've gone for two sweet corn rigs to kick this off with on this, on this area. The one behind me, as you saw, I might as well do this as I'm talking to you guys, I've got two more to do. The one behind me is um, a little waft of a, a naked tiger nut with a tiny bit of yellow foam on it just to negate and make it sort of almost neutral balance. And with that, it's only seven and a half wraps. So you saw the tigers, it's, they're, they're the, the quite large ones. So what I managed to do there was not use a spawn. I put a little bag of tigers, dried them up with a my towel there and a bag of six or seven tigers on the rig and I've put three big pouches they're like a 16 or 15 mil size them tigers they're a good size and I've put three pouches of them also is a little trick when I've done the, the little bag of tigers to put on the rig I've done what I normally do which was two pop-ups in a little bit of mesh put them inside the bag attach that to the rig so when they came up bear in mind talk, this is why I do it as well in a lot of places when you can use the catapult it's perfect after about 20 seconds the uh, the two pop-ups come up you've got a perfect marker at seven and a half wraps perfect marker and out went three catapults full of like no, 15 mil tiger nuts right on top of them so there's your tenth bomb. There we go. And I think because it's been very, very warm, ten bombs a mixed particle, I would definitely say is enough for a bite or two. 
The lads behind us had a few fish early morning through to about 8 o'clock, yeah, mid 30 as well. So um, they were on little bags. We'll see. So we've got 10 bombs, three catapults there. Now it's time to sit down. It's cooled off lovely, as my man behind the camera will also agree with you. I'm going to sit the kettle on and do myself a little bit of. Oh, actually, got salad tonight. That'd be lovely, a little bit of cold chicken and salad. Healthy. We've come to the end of a very, very hot. Now I know how Lawrence of Arabia felt. Today was ridiculous. Tomorrow is also going to be ridiculous. But we are led to believe that most of the takes, they obviously haven't been in the day on because we haven't caught anything. But we didn't start fishing until very late anyway because of that heat. Uh, now we're set and sorted. Baits are out, rigs are out. There's fish properly showing now instead of all that swirling stuff going on. But um, the guys next to us had a few last night. Uh, the lad to the left of Steve had a fish last night, so we're hoping um, we'll get some bites in the, in the, in the night. Uh, if we don't, we'll see you either way in the morning, thankfully. But um, hopefully a couple of big ones in the night, maybe an early morning bite. Let you know, have a nice cup of tea in the morning, if I don't see you in the dark hours. If anything moves, Steve. See, the line's going in the water here, and I'm fishing further out. Oh, there's a fish on. Right, the one rod I left on the 10 that baited spot because I've been dotting rods about with this channel and it's just lifted off but well, that was that was stuck solid there and um, in all fairness just a little bit of pressure and held it solid and she kicked herself out which they so often do but this is one for the sweet corn if we get him in yep and I was beginning to think it was maybe a trailer or something because it felt you know when you pull in the line and it's cutting through the weed did you did but um, as you can see it's not you've got to go in there mate you've got to go in there there you go you are in there well here you go <laughs> from dotting rods everywhere the one that you put out first yesterday. Right, so we need to get another rod back on that spot. Right, the one out the channel's done nothing fairly obviously, so this is coming in, re-wrapped at 10, which is where that fish has just come from, and um, it's going out again. That's a long one, isn't it? I didn't think it was anywhere near that when I went and slopping about in the weed there. 30 pounds, 
one ounces of St. John's mirror carp. That a bad welcome back. Like I said earlier, I haven't fished here for a good while. And this is over the 10 wraps with the bucket of, talk about pick and mix. See, my age, we always done pick and mix. They all do it now. My bucket was pick and mix. Peanuts, tigers, two types of emp, and sweet corn. And this is the first one off the list. This is a sweet corn fish. So now it's gonna be on the tigers. Yeah, 30 pound one. She'll do, won't she? I had a result earlier, uh, uh, just that 30 pound one ounce mirror. Doesn't care if it's one ounce, it's over the mark. Steve with the scales, oh, I never even got to look at them. Like I don't on a lot of the fish I catch. That way I can't be accused of fibbing. But 30 pound one, big long mirror. I think pre-spawning she might have hit 34, 35 pound, it was a big fish. Started yesterday, in all fairness, the one in the channel I did put on naked tigers. No funny remarks. The other two, Sweet corn, I use so much sweet corn, I really do with dynamite. Uh, that's my banker, or, or, you know, almost. But this morning, I had to nick one of them in, and if I had a bite, right, listen, I picked up the right and I reeled it in, and now like the left hand one went. We'll never know, but imagine if I'd picked the left hand one and left the right one, would I have got a bite? Who knows? The, the challenge is one on each side. I need to put a tiger nut on now and some peanuts, which I will be doing. I've just said to you it's midday, it, it's possibly 30 degrees already. I'm going to spend a few hours with the rods in, chill out, it's just so hot sitting here, you're burning. So late in the afternoon stroke, early evening when the temperature dips a bit, I'll sit here, I'll knock up a couple of free rigs for, for the peanuts and tiger nuts, show you what I'm going to use for the night. There'll be another 10 bombers on that area and another one out here randomly in the middle. But so rigs, now the one I had this morning has ruined my entire trip. I love using sweet corn, the yellow, the yellow plastic baits, it suits linear. But I've now got to use three different types of hook bait, although they are very similar in the fact they're all tiger nuts. The first one being, and they're not gonna be on my Ronnie rigs, they're gonna be wafters. Right, the first one, I've never used these before, I'm sure some of you guys have, is, um, that's how slippery it is. Black Tiger, a little bit of yellow foam, which I'm allowed to use. Uh, I want to balance that you down like a wafter. Pardon? You cleared that, the yellow foam. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll let you off. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, we cleared it. This is one of the subjects in McDonald's, which it clearly wasn't, obviously, from my face. But all three of the rigs I'm going to show you, they're all similar rigs. They're wafter rigs, okay? But they've got, we've got, a big tiger nut, a little tiger nut, and uh, we've got a naked tiger nut and a, and a black tiger nut. Right, there's that one. They're all very similar, as I've just said, the rigs. On the second one, we've got, which I have used these a lot, these naked tigers on a variety of venues and done really well on, including linear in the past. So similar rigs, just different hook baits, because the challenge is one fish on three different types. Now, yes, they're tiger nuts, but we have got naked tiger nuts, black tiger nuts, normal tiger nuts, and the corn, which was the fish this morning. Let me just get the other one out, because the third one, got a little bit slightly different. This is gonna go in the channel, where I'll talk to you about that rod in a minute. Gotta try and find it now. It's in here, I've buried it. When you hear me go, ouch, you'll know I found it. And let's call Steve's bit, oh, there he is, there he is. Ah! Right, this one is double tiger. Now what I've done with these, I've bored the centre of the tiger nut out and put in uh, a, a short length of, of um, cork, like a cigarette butt shaped, and that balances them out, and we'll show you this for a frame, and that balances them out so they sit just above the lake bed like so. What carp can resist a pair of tiger nuts? So that's what I'm doing. Briefly, what I'm doing with the rods is the lads who are behind us, mate, I'd have bought, I'd have give you 100 quid for a solid bag system this morning, but that bloke leaning over, the camera won't let, and I'm not going to do it, because like I said earlier, we're going to be cheating to you guys. So I would have loved to put a solid bag out. They finished just after lunch, 12 fish. I finished just for lunch, one fish. But we're sticking to the guns on the, on the spinning wheel. What I have done, though, is moved the, the, the channel rod. Last night was at seven and a half wraps. Tonight it's at 10 wraps. 
slap bang in the middle of the channel. I've already put four spawns of, of our mix over the top of where I'm going to be putting it, just to give us some more of a chance, because the boys with the solid bags were fishing them right on that central line. Um, and that's it. These two are going to go out in a minute when I put, I'm going to stick another 10 spawns on top of that. Just running through what I did the same, exactly the same as last night, and let's hope it produces, because I haven't got the yellow corn on, but I have got the yellow flash. Right, these are going out now. The channel rod is going to be at the Naked Tiger rig. Now, the two areas I'm fishing are quite soft, so uh, unusually for me, because I usually use fluoro all the time, I'm using one of our coated hook links with a little bit of skin peeled back there. These are balanced, as you saw in the bucket. A couple of old pop-ups is something I do all the time. Now, I'll explain that even further. It's a soft hook link. A, that will keep it away from the, the the leader in flight when she lands it'll hold it up for milliseconds in this warm water and it will just flick it down there and settle nice on top of the soft lake bed so that's that explained that will be done on all three rods this one is a channel rod and it's great because the rod behind you the two rods is 10 wraps and when i leaded this earlier when they were showing this morning it's also 10 wraps how cool is that we're 10 wrapping Here we go. Oh. That is the beauty of braid because you feel everything, and that is a bite. Yep. <laughs> This sad face. Unfortunately, it's not rain stop play, it's Mr. and Mrs. Carp making baby carp. This channel this morning has been heaving with frenzied activity. So, all of you've said uh, the rods are all in, there's no way um, you can put rods out of the bunks that lot. Why would you want to, in all fairness? But unfortunately, the free um, presentations didn't work because they didn't want, I'm not going to say anything rude. They didn't want it. I mean, look at them, they're smashing the water to pieces. So unfortunately, this car pursuit ends on, not, let's not say a low note, because we've got to, you've got to do what you've got to do. We've got morals. Um, the fact is we had a 30 pounder on one of them. The other to the other challenge, maybe we'll we reignite that in months to come and try and catch him on the tiger nuts. But uh, we won't blame the tiger nuts. We'll blame Mr. and Mrs. Carp this time. So thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed it. We've sat round in blistering heat at a McDonald's, at a 30, but had a blimmy good laugh. So thank you very much. <laughs>